and welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger, and this is the third edition from home. We'll talk open science with a former biohacker. Thomas Landrin has created a one-of-a-kind interdisciplinary lab that is now looking for solutions to the outbreak. Plus, we'll give you a wrap-up of some of the best open source initiatives against the virus in Africa. And in Test24, we'll help you escape from the anxiety created by the global pandemic with VR and AR experiences. Many companies are trying to find ways to protect their employees in the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak. And the latest gizmos out there are thermal cameras to detect if people have a fever. In the Hera region here in France, a company has even adapted its surveillance cameras to be able to meet the client's demands. A vast portion of telecommunications company MyConnect's employees is working remotely or has been furloughed. But the business is still up and running thanks to this innovation, the fever camera. Okay. Our job is simple. Thermal cameras already exist. We use them to detect intrusion or fires, for example. Now we've adapted the camera to make it more intelligent. In other words, to use it for measuring body temperatures. The camera's thermal lens can be configured to flag body temperatures above a certain degree. In this case, above 38 degrees Celsius. The camera can measure up to 30 people at a time. La prise de température du public peut s'avérer très précieuse dans un endroit aussi vulnérable que l'Institut Saint-Pierre, un hôpital pour enfants à Palavas-les-Flots près de Montpellier. Some 40 children are currently being treated at the Saint-Pierre Institute. For now, the hospital has been spared from the COVID-19 outbreak. And to keep it that way, it hopes to replace often inaccurate thermometers with more advanced tools. We are looking for a technology that's innovative, long-lasting, reliable, meaning that the readings are accurate and quick to interpret, so that we can make swift decisions as soon as a patient is admitted. Critics worry the new innovations mean individual freedoms may have to take the back seat. Concerns MyConnect rejects. There are no recordings, so we're respecting data protection laws. We're simply offering an alternative system to taking temperatures with thermometers. It can be done from a distance, without invading people's personal private lives. The network of Paris airports has already invested in thermal cameras, though airports here in southeastern France have not yet weighed in on the use of such tools. Now, these thermal cameras have actually been deployed in public areas in several countries, like in China, but also in Italy and Germany. And it's a technology that could come in handy as the lockdowns are being eased to continue tracing the epidemic. The main company that actually deploys these solutions is the Chinese firm Dahua Technologies. And they say their cameras can analyze 5,000 people in 30 minutes or three individuals per second. Now, of course, here in France, this technology raises privacy concerns, even though the firm says the data is not actually collected and stored. His dream is to create a Wikipedia of science. Thomas Landrin is a former biologist and a biohacker, and he's just created Joggle, which stands for just one big lab. It's an interdisciplinary lab where about 2,000 innovators get together on a daily basis and today, they've decided to tackle the COVID-19 outbreak. Let's take a listen. Bonjour. Qu'est-ce que l'open science L'open science est avant tout une bataille pour libérer les données scientifiques qui se trouvent enfermées derrière des paywalls, ces fameux murs financiers qui obligent les lecteurs à devoir payer pour accéder à des recherches pourtant financées par nos données publiques. Aujourd'hui, l'open science consiste à aller encore plus loin, car en effet, la bataille originale est en passe d'être gagnée. L'enjeu maintenant est de permettre à l'ensemble des citoyens Pas seulement de consulter l'information, mais de prendre part au processus du progrès scientifique lui-même. Pourquoi c'est important Eh bien, on peut considérer qu'il y a juste trop de problèmes pour cette planète pour uniquement s'appuyer sur les institutions actuelles. C'est exactement la raison pour laquelle nous avons créé Just One Giant Lab, qu'on appelle également Juggle, l'ONG que j'ai co-créé avec Léo Blondel et Marc Santolini, tous deux chercheurs. Notre objectif, c'est de mettre à disposition une plateforme numérique 
pour mettre euh, en relation des porteurs de projets scientifiques et technologiques d'intérêt général avec des contributeurs bénévoles qui ont des compétences et des ressources à mettre à disposition. Pourquoi c'est important Eh bien, en, via cette mise en relation, on va pouvoir permettre à ces projets d'avancer très 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 vite. Parce qu'en effet, il n'y aura plus de limitations sur les compétences et sur les ressources. Aujourd'hui, on travaille non pas seulement sur euh, le changement climatique, mais également sur la crise du Covid-19. En effet, il y a maintenant six semaines, nous avons lancé un grand programme qui s'appelle Open Covid-19 et qui déjà rassemble plus de 4000 personnes à l'échelle de la planète et qui travaille sur à la fois euh, des projets de diagnostic, des projets de prévention et de traitement du Covid-19. Tout ça avec le but que ce soit abordable et que ce soit ouvert. Alors ici, qu'est-ce que veut dire ouvert Ça veut dire ouvert comme dans Wikipédia, c'est-à-dire que tout est comme dans faisant partie du domaine public. On travaille aujourd'hui avec la PHP pour nous permettre de mieux comprendre les besoins des hôpitaux et surtout qu'une fois qu'on arrive à trouver une solution, que celle-ci puisse être testée en milieu hospitalier et même validée. Parce qu'une fois qu'on a cette validation, on peut envoyer un message clair au reste du monde sur ce qui ne fonctionne pas et sur ce qui fonctionne. Sur les tests de diagnostic, pour vous donner un exemple, on cherche avant tout à rendre la possible la création de ces tests localement. On ne cherche pas à créer un produit qui va devoir être distribué de manière centralisée. Non, on cherche vraiment à donner la recette de façon à ce que n'importe quel laboratoire partout dans le monde puisse la récupérer et la réaliser lui-même. All eyes are now on Africa as the virus continues to spread worldwide. The European Union and the African Union are calling for more collaboration on sanitary issues. But innovators are taking matters into their own hands and looking to open source initiatives to help them fight the COVID-19 outbreak. From Senegal to Cameroon, they are indeed important game changers. Well, to talk more about this, let's turn to our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello, Dan. Hi, Julia. So tell us more about these solutions that are tackling the challenges posed by COVID-19. One of the initiatives comes from Kenya. It's an impact tracker that is hosted on the platform Ushahidi. Its objective is to collect accurate data about the social and economic impact of COVID-19 in Africa. On this platform, users can anonymously participate in surveys that touch upon different themes, such as reasons behind self-isolation, the effects of social distancing, general awareness or knowledge about COVID-19, and the effects on small and medium enterprises. Now, this information can provide deeper insights about the overall impact of this pandemic and also help organizations that are involved in responding to this crisis. Now, COVID-19 has had an impact on investors, as Rebecca Enon Chong, the founder and CEO of AppStack, explains. $343 million. That's how much money has been raised by startups in Africa in 2020. Um, that's a huge growth even from last year. But as we know, because of coronavirus, investors are going to start being a lot more cautious about their investments. And we'll see that number starting to trend down. But there are some investors that have created specific programs to support African startups during this very difficult period. One of these is Green Tech Capital in collaboration with uh, the African Business Angels Network, Tommy Davies. Um, also, GSMA has stepped up. Um, GSMA is the Association of African Telcos, also has a specific program for startups during this period. Some other initiatives include collaborative efforts, such as hackathons, that call on experts to find solutions to challenges in different fields, such as public health, food security, and education. Now, Dan, researchers in Senegal, but also in the UK, are trying to develop easy-to-use diagnostic kits to uh, test people rapidly. It's going to really come in handy in Africa, but not only in other parts of the world as well. The Pasteur Institute in Dakar has teamed up with the UK biotech firm Mologic to develop these kits that can produce test results in just 10 minutes and for reportedly as little as $1 per test. Now, these kits are expected to be available in June, and as many as 8 million kits will be produced annually. The prototypes of these kits have been sent to different labs around the world. Now, the reason why this development is so important is because quick, affordable, and large-scale testing are the key elements in limiting the spread of COVID-19. 
And let's move on now to test 24. And this week in Test 24, Dan has been bitten by the culture bug. He's been taking virtual tours of some of the most fascinating museums in Paris. So Dan, tell us about the exhibits you saw. Well, Julia, one of my most memorable cultural experiences was watching the ruins at Pompeii with Mount Vesuvius in the background. And perhaps that's the reason why I got so excited about the Pompeii VR experience, courtesy the Grand Palais. In this experience, you are transported to the so-called House in the Garden of Pompeii, whose ruins were discovered during the last excavation. You can explore different areas of the house, you can see how it looks today and compare it to how it must have looked before the eruption of the volcano in 79 AD. I also tried out the virtual reality experience of Chateau de Versailles, in which you can walk through different rooms, including the famous Hall of Mirrors. You can explore around 150 artworks, furniture, and even paintings on the ceilings. And very briefly, I also did virtual tours of three more museums, Musée d'Orsay, the Rijksmuseum, and the Vincent van Gogh Museum using my smartphone, thanks to the application called Google Arts and Culture, which provides instant access to hundreds of institutions all across the world. Well, thank you, Dan and Jay Cattle Car. That actually brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. And we're gonna leave you with these fabulous pictures of the One Home Project. This as we celebrate the 50th Earth Day. Gives you an overview of Earth, a sense of what astronauts must be feeling up there and an opportunity to escape and take a look at the bigger picture as the entire world is bracing for a long battle against COVID-19. See you soon.